What up, y'all? This is Casey Schofield on the A Little Bit of Everything podcast, our debut episode. And with me here, I got my good buddy, my business partner, my brother, Mr. Tony Gebhardt. How you doing, pal? I'm good, man. How you doing? Man, doing great, man. It's, 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 Tony, man, me and you, dude, we go back such a long way man we have such a story man so it's much true. history i shoot i i remember um fuck we we met almost eight eight years ago it probably <clears> was <throat> eight years like uh i don't remember exactly when but we had I, met... I think i think it'll be eight years in july something like that because i remember we met through a mutual friend and um, yeah it instantly clicked because you know he and, and, you know, I was a youngin at the time. I was probably 13 or 14, and then I'm 21 now. So, yeah, it's we're almost running on eight years. But, shoot, yeah, there's quite a history. Yeah, yeah. We we um, <clears throat> we ran a business together. I mean, we've we've made audio projects together. You know what? As a matter of fact, you know, Tony uh, was uh, the reason why I made the Jaws for Windows is a Murderer series. And, uh, well, we all know the story behind that. <laughs> yeah, so I, I guess I'll give a little detail. So y'all know any uh, JFW is, uh, for murder listeners who's listened to the series, one of the uh, icons in the uh, story is the uh, leader of the – no, he wasn't a leader of the crime family. He was, he was – Casey, Casey can tell you what he turned him into. But basically Charles, who um, originally was my idea – he was uh, just this psychopath freak who had no empathy, no sympathy, you know, no care in the world for a human life. And he got himself killed at the end of every little episode that I made. You know, it, I mean, it was various ways that he died, various ways, like an axe to the head, uh, thrown through a jukebox and electrocuted. <laughs> I mean, he's, he he's, Charles Charles was the Sean Bean. Yeah. Of the, yeah. The he. Script the he, audio work yeah he got put through hell and um you know my audio projects were you know no more than five minutes long so they're just little skits and casey had come to me one day is like i have an idea for this guy and of course when he came to me i was i was kind of coming to a close with the whole audio project thing i don't make them really anymore but i i was kind of closing that chapter and i was like fuck it take him you know turn him into something else and he can pretty much tell you what he did to him but yeah he he's that was basically his origin <laughs> Yeah, we 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 took the Charles character and uh, we turned him into this badass like crime like hitman, you know. Mm -hmm. And he, I mean, he was this ruthless, cold assassin, and uh, I mean, just just awesome, awesome stuff, man. And I mean, a, you know, JFW, you know, it 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 turned into. Uh, one of the most su successful audio dramas of 2017. I mean, it was just, wow, you know. And, I mean, you know, I'm no, you know, I didn't make a damn dollar off of it. But it's okay. Like, that's not the point. Like, the point is is that You're having great. fun. Yeah, you're having fun. Yeah. You're, you're creating a fictitious storyline based off, you know, these text-to-speech engines that – you know, no one would think for a second would be involved no. in some kind of drama, you know, and, and Casey, you know, I, I remember before I even met Casey, I, I listened to this um, Jaws versus Windows skit that he did. Um, was it? Well, no, it was Windows versus Macintosh. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And it, it was basically it was it was very similar to the shit I used to make, you know, 10 minutes of people talking shit to each other and eventually breaking out into this brawl. And, you know, to the average person, they'd listen to it. They'd be like, what the fuck is this? But, like, right? it, it's hilarious. It's, like, it's this, funny. This shit don't make any sense. Right, man. but it's funny. It, and it's crazy because it's something you would never expect. And it's it's hilarious how you see it almost every day now, too. Like, and within the blind community primarily, you know, people who are huge into programming, into computers, and who have, that, who have the time on their hands to, uh, you know, spend time doing that. They're making shit like this, and you know, Casey. Yeah. You know, Casey is. You know, I, dude, you're like, you're one of the dudes who originated that. You, you made a piece of that that eventually became like the foundation for it. You know. Oh yeah. Hey man, did you know that they have Jaws for Windows fan fiction now? Yeah. See, no, that's yeah. That, that's what's hilarious. Yeah. You know, it's like he's. There's now other people out there who are taking the storyline and and creating it of their own which i think is fucking awesome i think that's oh, yeah. that, it's hilarious and it's 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 interesting especially um 
you know, thinking about what people could do with it and, you know, their, their own individual ideals, you know, it, it's cool. Exactly. You know, and it's just proof that you can take anything and turn it into gold. I mean, all you have to have is just a little talent, you know, just a little talent and you can go a long way, man. Oh yeah. Like if you can write a script, if you can write dialogue, you know, kind of having that, um, you know, fiction in your mind, like what, you know, how do I envision, you know, Reed from eloquence or, uh, Alex from voiceover on the Mac, like what, what kind of conversations would they have? You know, what kind of relationships would they have? You know, it's, it's, it's like creating a movie realistically, you know, or, or some kind of short film and designing a plot. And uh, I mean, it's hard if you want to do it really, really well, but you know, practice, practice makes permanent. So, Oh yeah. <clears throat> so man, let us start from the beginning. I mean, like I know all about you, you know what I mean? But like, it's a podcast, man. <laughs> let's let's let us delve into Tony Gebhardt. I mean, like, sure. How did this start, man. Like, 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 was it like you just always had this natural ability to play guitar? I mean, how did this all start? Um. Okay. So I'm 21 now, and I I started playing music when I was around eight years old, and um, I. No, it didn't. It didn't start. I mean, I believe in gifts. You know, I'm, I'm a I'm a I'm a God man. So I believe God had this implanted in me since day one. But it was up to me to find it. But, you know, to anybody else who may not see see uh, certain things in that in that spectrum, I, I really what happened was I, I lost I was starting to lose my vision more and more as as the years progressed when I was about seven or eight years old. And um, I, I naturally, you know, I had to give up the video games. It was hard for me to play video games like I wanted to. And, of course, at seven, yeah. eight years old. I, I was, bet that was hard. Oh, man. dude, I was fucking devastated. You know, you, you do that to a 30-year-old. They're like, oh, whatever, fuck it, and I'll do something else. But seven-year-old, that was the end of the universe. So, you know, I was scared. I was worried, you know, because I didn't have anything else in my life other than maybe soccer or baseball. Or, uh, excuse me, not baseball. Fuck, it's been a minute. Uh, street hockey. But um, what, what was I saying here? Like, my, my dad had bought me this Yamaha starter keyboard this is a 61 key yamaha and i just delve you know head over heels in this thing you know because i knew my time was short with my vision and yeah i had this just instant change of attention to being like all right if i can't do this i'm gonna do this and it it, it sprouted this enormous infatuation with being in the basement for hours and hours and hours and hours after school before school just playing, learning the demos that were built into these things, you know, doing one hand left, le left and right handed demos with Beethoven pieces and, and, and a bunch of stuff that was built into the thing. And it, it started to grow. It really started to grow. I started actually knowing what I was doing, memorizing things as I went along. And, you know, time, as time passed, my ninth birthday comes around um, and I got a guitar. And I, I never really played guitar ever in my life. But, you know, I, shout out to my dad. I love him very much for putting this in my life. He bought me an electric guitar. And right then and there, I felt like, oh, shit, you know, here we go. We're going to add another instrument to the to the repertoire. And I I, I just fell in. It, it was an instant, uh, instant uh, gravitational pull, I feel like. And right. You know, same as the keyboard. I would spend hours and hours and hours and hours. Of course, the <laughs> amp that I had at the time busted after like a year so i plugged my guitar into oh dude everything like i i used karaoke machines for amplifiers and i would boost the volume all the way up so it would distort so it would create distortion you know, yeah i didn't care if it would fuck up the the speaker you know I, I i i wasn't worried about any of that nonsense i just wanted something that sounded metal and um and, and that's the other thing i fell in love with metal music at such a young age you know collecting i i, I adopted my dad's uh, CD collection, you know, we're talking Tool, Metallica, Megadeth, Godsmack, uh, Def Leppard, uh, Kill Switch Engage, all these bands <laughs> that I had never heard of before, but gave me a peace of mind. It gave me like, wow, this is aggressive, but it's it's an outlet. It's a it's a it's a it's an outlet for me because at the time I needed it. You know, I you well, know, you know, and I mean, that's the thing, like. You know, that's how it all starts. See, like, whether it's writing or music or any of that, like, 
it's an art form. It's a way to express yourself without hurting somebody else, you know, and it's, it's, man, it is just, you know, like the best thing ever. Yeah, dude. Yeah, for sure. And, um, here we are, you know, come fourth, fifth grade. This is when I'm starting to get really serious about this as a, as a major hobby. You know, I got two new guitars. I, uh, the guitar, oh, if anybody was wondering, the guitar that I got was a black and white Fender Stratocaster with a, um, God forbid, I don't remember the amp. I think the amp just came with it because it was a starter set, one of those dealios. Um, yeah. And I, I started getting more guitars. Um, I got another Strat. It was a red and white one. Um, and I started collecting, you know, I got my first drum set when I was 10, you know, just this little thing, you know, it wasn't too big, but that, that got, I got so obsessed with it and, and, you know, uh, sidetrack a little bit, you know, before I got this drum set, I fell in love with the drums too, because across the street from where I was living at the time, my best friend, Luke, his brother has a, had, had a drum set in his basement that I would always pester him like, dude, can I play? Can I play? Can I play? You know, 10 year old Tony is like, you know, who's what the fuck? Yeah. This, this kid's getting irritating. <laughs> you yeah. know, that's all I wanted to do, man. I loved music yeah. so much. I, I, not, not loved. I love, I love music so much, you know, especially at the time where all I wanted to do was pass my time with writing or not really writing. I wasn't writing at the time, but just indulging myself in recording and, or, uh, you know, so, okay, so we'll fast forward a little bit. You know, I played talent shows. I, I brought my guitar to school at lunchtime. I would pester my, my, the, the principal, like, can I play guitar at lunch? Can I play? Cause that's when I started becoming obsessed with performing. Cause I was comfortable. I was comfortable that right then and there to now go out in front of people and be like, look, I'm going to play you a Metallica riff. What do you think? You know, this is 10, 10 year old, 11 year old me. And, yeah. um, here we go. Fast forward again. 12, 13 years old, this is when I started getting really serious um, with writing. And, I mean, I say serious at the time because it, it was a big deal for me uh, because, you know, I, I had a, uh, an old Dell laptop that I used that was given to me by my dad. And I would run, plug in my guitar and line it in through the computer and I would record using WavePad or Audacity or like you know editors like that, and and my first program that I used was Windows Sound Recorder, which was interesting. I got to tell you, I mean nowadays I look at it and be like, whoa, what the heck? Mm-hmm. But at the time I was like, dude, this is this is a whole new universe. So that's that's what began my recording. And shoot, I still have um, somewhere on, on on a hard drive like ten or eleven recordings of me when I was thirteen. You know, like 60 second blips of just riffs that I was diddling around with. And um, here we go. Fast forward again. 2000, what was this, 2010, 2011, it may be. I made my first little demo and I sold it for like four bucks at school. You know, nothing, you know, because I wanted to make a little bit of money, see how that would work. Because, you know, I, I, I had been seeing so much stuff on Facebook about bands making money off of this. So I'm like, hmm, how can I do that? And, uh, you know, they were like 60 second, two minute, three minute little ditties that I'd used with a uh, RP90 Digitex effects pedal. And I, I had a, uh, it had a built in drum machine on it too. So I would riff along with it and loop it too. So, nice. you know, I, I, I did a riff on top of a drum, a drum, uh, a drum sample, and then I would write, like, record a lead on top or something like that. It, it was magic, man. I, I, I still have that CD, too. You know, so it's, oh, yeah. it's, it's nostalgia for real. Um, yeah. Well, you know, and the crazy thing about it is, is when you get involved with, like, any kind of, <clears throat> you know, like, music or writing, like, it consumes you, but, like, it's, like, such, like, it's so positive, like, mm-hmm. I remember when I was in the school, when I was in, like, fifth, sixth grade, like, and, you know, even, even upwards, you know, like, into, you know, junior high and high school, like, that's all I wanted to do, like, I would skip, like, lunch, oh, yeah, and recess, and everything, because, like, all I wanted to do was write, like, I'm, like, I got this big novel, you know what I mean, and, like, I would go home and like, instead of doing my homework, I would just write and yeah. like, it's, it's just, it's, it's so awesome, man. Yeah. Like, it's so yeah. awesome. Like how this shit works out. But I mean, it pays off. I mean, like if you, like if you just chip away at it, chip away at it, chip away at it. Like, I mean, it pays oh, no off doubt. so big. Right. 
you know, and, and that's that's the whole thing of it. I, I remember writing, too. This is kind of sidetracked from the music, but I don't do it as much anymore. I mean, poetry, obviously, with songwriting. But back in middle school and like late elementary, I was at, so I used to be really obsessed with Stephen King and Edgar Allan Poe and, and dudes like that. And um, I was into some violent shit when I was a kid. I'm, I'll admit that. And I I used to write these. Um, what do you want to call it? Um I guess there's suspense thrillers and stuff like that, you know, with detectives and, um, you know, stories about murder, murder cases that went wrong or, and, and, and they were like four or five page short stories. They were tiny, but I used to do that too, you know, and, and it was fun. But anyway, go, go back to the music. Like, uh, so around the same time that I was doing the demo in eighth grade, I met a buddy in one of my English classes, his name is Christian Storms. He later became the drummer of my first band, and we we kicked it off pretty good. You know, he he was a, he's he's a very introverted dude, but you know, being that I'm partially introverted and very much an extrovert, I I related to him a lot. So we we started talking, and I didn't even know he played music at the time. You know, for all I knew, you know, he's just a regular dude and whatever, blah blah blah. And come freshman year, um. I st- I, oh, I'm going too fast here. Uh, so the Christian storms, he'll, he'll be, he'll be a big part of the story, but moving on to ninth grade, um, I f- wanted to start my first band because at this point I was ready. I felt like I was ready to actually start doing the band thing. Yeah. And I I'm trying to remember where I know him from. It's crazy. My memory is jogged, but Jordan Gluting, who became my first uh, who became the drummer of I Am Among Giants when we started. Um, he, awesome drummer, amazing Christian influence. You know, he, he's he's all around uh, a, a very influential dude. He's very much an uh, inspiration to me, at the, especially at the time. And we started jamming a lot. And I mean a lot. We became really good friends. We started jamming, just doing stuff in, my old, in, in, in the basement. And uh, Christian comes along later. Cause he messaged me on Facebook and we started talking about, I think the, I think the first conversation we had was about that 70s show or something like that. We were talking about TV <laughs> shows. So it's like, whatever, just a casual Facebook convo. And, um, he told me he played bass and I'm like, well, shoot, man, you want to, you want to come play? You want to audition or something like that, whatever. And uh, he came out and auditioned for us, got in because he's a genius at music. And then, uh, he we we played we rehearsed we did some stuff we didn't do our first show till for a while but anywho Jordan eventually had to leave um because he was going off to college and stuff was just getting way too busy and of course I was in eighth ninth grade at the time so a part of me didn't understand but a part of me also really you know because he was 20 19 or 20 when he joined um so Jordan left but then I found a video of Christian playing drums and I was like dude you're a genius but da, 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 you know, it's like I was losing my mind. And I'm like, why don't you play drums for me? You know, so instantly we started doing that. And at the time I was moving. So I, I had moved houses. It was ninth grade. And we, we, we started recording stuff together. And at that point, that's when we started writing uh, music together and suffocation and the void, which were two songs that we wrote. Uh, suffocation, uh, actually later became a song on father, forgive me, but I'll get, I'll get to that later. But, um, Suffolk, uh, we wrote those two songs. We just did little demos on garage band at the house. And, um, you know, I, I saw something growing. There was a spark. There was something that was there. I just like, you know, I felt this thing inside of me that was saying, this is it, this is going to be it. And, um, so sometimes you just know, man. you just know, right. It's a gut instinct. Like I need to, I need to capitalize on this. And, yeah. uh, so Chris Kelly, who became our guitar player, I knew him from youth group. We went to youth group together in seventh and eighth grade, uh, over at, um, I'm trying to remember what church this is. Mars Hill, Mars Hill. We went to uh, something called the element and eventually something called Anthem, which is their middle school and their high school, uh, youth group programs. And, um, I, I heard him play for the first time in eighth grade when we did a talent show and I was blown away. He was doing a, 
uh, I just I could think it was just like a guitar solo or something. But then I heard him play the uh, solo from Afterlife uh, from Event Sevenfold, and I was just like, dude, you're you're a genius. You you are. And I told it was funny because we. We had a pizza party after the talent show, and I remember us talking. I'm like, man, maybe sometime we can jam together. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, and here a year later, I get I'm in contact with him talking. I don't remember how it officially started online, but I think I wrote something about looking for a guitar player. He commented, we talked, and he came over. We did an audition, and bam, he was added to the band. So we had you know, so we had me, Chris Kelly, and Christian Storms, and this is when things started getting real. Because then we started writing. We started making stuff. And the first song that we did as a whole group was uh, a song called The Void. And, um, I mean, it was amazing. Very simplistic riffs, only like three or four, uh, three or four chords, but it was still something. It was st something to start, start us off as a group. And um, uh, what was I going to say here? Uh, to uh, reverse a little bit, as far as performances, Christian and I pl had a couple of we actually did a few shows. Um, Chris was present for a couple, um, but uh, to start off, like when, when we did it, we did this thing called Stars on Stage, which was the thing that my high school put on. And we had um, 97.9 GRD come out, which is our local rock station here in Grand Rapids. They came out and videotaped the whole thing, put it online. It was, it was awesome. Oh, it was, it was, it was, oh, it, uh. yeah, it was a cool time, man. And it was funny because, we we had like three different bass players when we were playing music together, and you know I I remember we had we had a guy named Eric, we had um, an individual named Maddie, we had uh, oh gosh who who else played I know there was another bass player we had a, we even had a different we had another vocalist too because I I wanted to experiment with a with having you know female vocals on 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 board you know and so we had this girl named shay she's a sweetheart totally cool i don't know if she's still living in michigan anymore she might be in tennessee because i know her family was out there but um but after a while those ships sailed you know it was a good trial period with everything because we were still trying to figure out who the hell we were gonna be and 2013 rolls around and i was just like okay guys we need to find a bass player chris had a has a friend who they who went to high school with him his name's ben abid and he auditioned. He's amazing. He's excellent. And instantly right there, bam, we had a full band. We were, we were complete. We were, I felt as though we just, you know, it's, it's like, it's the, it's like that feeling when you Matt, when you, when you solve a, a Rubik's cube or something like that. Like, oh my God. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I cannot, I cannot, <laughs> dude. Like I, I just ended up ripping the fucking thing. Apart. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's hard, but that's what it felt like. We just, we solved it. And, um, we played our first show as a full band on I'm trying to remember the date. Probably May twenty no, May thirtieth. We were opening up for a band called Uncommon Road. Shout out to those guys. Uh at a place called the Shed here in Jenison, Michigan, which is the youth building actually for my the church that I go to. But it, it was a Christian rock show. You know, I'm probably like fifty to hundred people, but it was awesome. I was like, yes. And at that time we had a full set list too. And we were, you know, and, and from there on, I mean, we played, we played in Grand Rapids. We played at the intersection here in Grand Rapids, amazing club venue. We played at Billy's lounge, which is this really cool bar on the east side of town. Yeah. we made a lot of really awesome friends in the scene, you know, uh, to name a few gift to Hera drifter, uh, violent vessels, um, shoot minus two. Uh, Fire set the albatross, like all these, all these awesome West Michigan bands. We got to know yeah. very well, and uh, dude, I wouldn't have traded it for the universe. You know, I, you know, I, um, I loved those dudes. Eventually, we we did have to throw in the towel in 2015 because everyone was kind of going in their own separate direction, and you know, it, it was devastating for me. Admittingly, it was. It was hard. Yeah, oh, I, yeah. I, I had to see my baby grow up and, and move on. You know, and I, I. The, I don't look back with any regrets or any bad blood because, you know, all of us, we're still in contact. We're still doing work together. I mean, shoot, Chris Kelly, he 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 featured on um, my solo album, which I'll get to here in a little bit. But I that's I Among Giants, man. You know, that was a major chapter in my life that really gave me peace and and, and gave me um, motivation to do what I wanted to do. Oh, yeah. So so I mean, like at this point after your first band had like you know 
ran its course and done its thing. It's like, was it just like, huh? Okay. Let's see what's next kind of thing. Right. right. You know, first, like my first impression was, you know, what the fuck, I guess, admittingly, you know, it's the arrogance inside of me. I, I was definitely upset, but I, I knew cause you know, we were all adults at this point, 18, 19. And I, I knew right then and there, I'm like, okay, everybody has full scholarships to go to school. Everybody's doing their own thing. And I knew it was the right thing. You know, we had to do what we had to do. Yeah, you know, exactly. It, it's one of those parts of life that you don't exactly want to see as real, but it, it is, you know. Well, you know, and I mean, you know, you're probably thinking like for a second, not speaking for you, but like it's probably like, man, like I had this band and like now it's like gone. Oh. I mean, like, most most certainly, dude. Like, there was a point at which I was like, okay, we got to start all over again. I'm like, what the fuck, you know? But yeah, yeah, you know, you're like back to square one. It's like, oh, great, okay. But I, I the thing that I took away from my Among Giants was knowledge and wisdom and experience because yeah, that that was the most important part was knowing what to do and what not to do and knowing the right people to look for and the and and, and the good the good elements that makes up a band, you know. But you know that that passed and um you know over the years i've been doing collaborations with tons of people and one of which is my friend joshua uh griswax excellent musician yeah i mean he, i'll always man. say josh josh is just he's a fucking brilliant musician yeah dude I, no he's he's amazing he's he's given yeah. me, he's he's one of my best friends and one of the most inspirational songwriters i've ever had the pleasure of working with and him and i dove neck deep at that point because yeah. I, I needed something else to do. I, you know, and I, I had songs for a solo record, but I wasn't ready for a solo record yet. And yeah. I needed time to still do my thing with a group. So we started, uh, we, Oh my God, man. I mean, like he has an amazing voice. Man. He does. He does. We, oh. So we started a project called away with my weakness, which didn't get too serious, but still had a, you know, we still had a, I guess, a, a marketing thing going on, you know, but we, we made it fun nonetheless. We did, um, so he, we kind of shared, you know, he played bass guitar and sang. I played guitar and sang, and we both kind of wrote the songs together. We released a three-song EP in 2016 called Alive, which can be found anywhere. I mean, iTunes, Apple Music. Um, and then... This is when I lived in Alaska, so to make this a long story short, right? I moved to Alaska after high school. This is when I and Giants played our last show in June. Um, it was a headlining show we did with our friends Gift of Hero, which shout out to Blake, Eli, uh, and and all you guys. You know, you guys, I love you, and everybody else in the band loves you. Um, but uh, we, uh, I, I moved out there for the first time two month trial period, see what it was going to be like, came home, hated it. You know, I, I was, it was depressing. You know, I went through de uh, homesickness and shit. So I came home, wrote some music and this, this is when the solo album stuff started early 2016. And I, I just got this boost of ideas and I had a long list of songs that I played with. I among giants that I was like, you know, would the boys be okay if I took some of these songs and renewed them for a solo album. There were some songs I didn't touch because we wrote them all together. And there were some songs that, you know, were originally mine to begin with. So I, I took, uh, oh shoot, I don't remember how many, but, you know, I, I started writing a lot. And I've never stopped writing. I've always been writing my whole life. But I, 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 I began, uh, mon, uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? Collaging them together for a release. And, Come April, I had artwork, had all the necessary things, and I put up a GoFundMe to raise some cash for the CDs. Out, out did my goal in two weeks. Got the CDs printed and ordered. Come wow. to, you know, it, it was awesome. I couldn't have been more thankful for the, the 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 realm of support that came out of of the gates with fans from the band and yeah. uh, you know supporters of, of myself and. It, it it was it was really cool and very humbling too because you know it made me cry once or twice admittingly you know yes. it did you know and I have 
one of those CDs, actually. And, uh, man, I got to tell you, when I got that package in the mail, man, and, I mean, you got to think, you know, on a personal level with me and you, I mean, everything, you know, me and you did together from, like, owning a business together that totally flopped and, you know, like, doing all the pro wrestling stuff and, you know, oh, yeah. like, all the, I mean, all this stuff. And then, like, to to get your music in the mail, to hold a physical copy of it. I mean, I, I, I was so fucking proud, man. I, I just, I was like, wow, man. I mean, that's my boy, man. (laughs) It's my pleasure, man. You know, it, it feels good to have a sense of purpose with, you know, the marketing side of things and commercializing the, the album and, and putting out there. So, you know, next, I, I guess on the agenda is to talk about father, forgive me. So that's the name of the album. It's my debut. It came out July 4th, 2016. Amazing and, album. And Amazing. Uh, thank you. And it, uh, it's a, con- it's a concept CD. So from front to back, there's dead eyes, let it go. Win or lose far away, vicious suffocation. We need salvation calling out father, forgive me home. That's the whole album, as well as three bonus tracks, which is Alive, Never, and Far From Forsaken. And uh, this album conceptualizes my life with my belief in Christ, but also my 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 uh, confusion and, and, and inability to uh, separate flesh from spirit. Because I, you know, my philosophy with, with believing in Christ is you can't be perfect, so don't try to be perfect because you're going to fail don't exactly. you know don't Every don't time. yeah don't give in to sin don't don't give into it but understand it's inevitable so it's going to happen it's going yes. to happen and and, and and i got a lot of flack for that i did because you know i a lot of christian extremists and, and a couple of radio stations that told me you know this is heresy we can't do this you know we can't support this we can't play this blah 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 because you know they're all about the purification of christ so am i but I live a different philosophy, you know, so, but anyway, the the album has a very blunt display of anger, lust, frustration, separation, anxiety, Uh, but I also dove into the, uh, the, the, the topic of worship, you know, Father Forgive Me in of of itself, the title track, track nine, um, which actually features Josh, um, my, my buddy Josh, who I was telling you about, my friend Kiko, who does narration, and then Chris Kelly, who did guitar on a uh, guitar solo. All well, shout-outs to you guys. Um, they The song in, – encapulate, uh, encap, how do you say that? Ca- encapulates? Encapsulates or whatever. <laughs> I don't fucking yeah, know. Yeah, well, whatever. But it, it, it grasps that aspect of if you're somebody who lives a vicious lifestyle and has any – kind of hint of redemption and who wants it who craves the 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 overwhelming washing of the spirit you can get it it's yours you know because that's all that's all jesus wants you know and Definitely. that's the whole that's the whole the thing about the album that's the whole theme is you can be forgiven you Absolutely. can be forgiven, you know, and I'm not going to shove this down anybody's face who may not believe who's listening. But here's the thing, you know, that's 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 my belief with the uh, with 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 the album. And, you know, it, it, w- it was probably one of the coolest things I ever did. And, you know, number two is coming out, which I'll talk about event here in a little bit. But uh, Father Forgive Me was was so amazing. I sold out within three to four months of all all the copies. Online sales went crazy for that first six months. You know, I made a good chunk of change. It felt good. I knew I was affecting people, you know, and, you know, I was able to sell it internationally, which was cool. I had a couple copies go out of the country, you know, so it was a good step in the right direction. It really was. Yeah. And I got to, um, I want to give thanks to my friend Kiko Picasso for doing the artwork as well as, um, helping with the release. That was really nice of you. Thank you very much. And all the, uh, everybody that I dedicated the album to, you know, uh, the, the I Among Giants boys, my my choir director who helped, you know, shape my voice to what it is, my family, my friends, it, you know, it it was it was amazing, and um, you know that that was that man, and I I moved back to Alaska that year and stayed for quite a while actually, and that's when I started playing drums 
for a yeah. metal band um, called Age of Zeta, um, which didn't really get off the ground. But damn, did we have a good time? There was so many rehearsals we had. We got to play at least a couple shows, and you know, it it, it was fun. You know, it's it's been a it's been a fun last couple of years. You know, adventuring out. Live, I lived on the West Coast for a while. Came back. And here we are, um, 2018, you know, and album number two has been in the works for probably a good year. I started writing about a year ago, and um, I got to tell you, it's it's something else. It's it's fun. It's it's it longer. It's bigger. It's me- more meaningful. Has a deeper concept to it. The album's called Changes. Very very simple name. Very short and to the point. And it's about change. It's about it's it's. Uh, there's a lyric that I like to that I like to quote from one of my favorite bands, uh, As I Lay Dying. The uh, lyric is the only constant is change. Oh yeah, yeah. And I've heard parts of this album, and it sounds a lot different. I mean, like it has a different sound to it. Uh, but you know, that's that's what you want in life and in art form in any art form yep. you know yeah to stay stagnant is to fail you know to not move forward is is your is you know is your destruction right no to, and and it, it's, as, it's, as much as we want to stay in place especially if we're satisfied with what's going on i mean it's going to grow old it's going to get it's going to become overused and redundant you know, you need, yeah. we need, re- like, it's like renewal energy. We need to renew. We need to get something new. Always, always. You need to recharge, refresh. Um, But uh, on that, you know, I'd like to play a song for you guys off of the new album. It's called Reach Out. Um, it's on iTunes, on Apple Music, Spotify, wherever you want to get it. It came out in November. Um, just give this a listen. Tell me what you guys think. Shoot. Here we go.
that was Reach Out. Uh, very different if you've listened to my other stuff. It's got a uh, R&B type, you know, kind of hip hop kind of approach to it. But uh, I wanted to try something new. I wanted to get into something more, more, more modern. You know, some people would say, oh, you're selling out. Well, you know, that's it's not what the fuck I'm doing with it. If you read, you know, I I want to try messing with different styles. I you have to get the time. Yeah, man. that's it. I mean, you know, that's where like a lot of these people, you know, like all this bullshit. Oh, well, you know, it's not like it was. Yeah. Well, of course not. You know, because it's not yesterday. It's today. Yeah. You know? that's and it. I mean, I'm not saying I always agree with where things are going, but, you know, if you don't adapt then you don't go anywhere. Yep. You're going to grow old and jaded. You know, you can't do the same thing. You can't always mm-hmm. do the same thing with music. You know, I, even me, like there are certain styles of like music that I, that I try to play sometimes that I always was obsessed with as a kid. And it's just like, this doesn't feel the same, man. No, that's, that's it. You know, it's, it's just a whole part of uh, becoming you know, it's you're developing yourself. You're you're putting new things into your system that you can do. And of course, am I am I gonna stop playing my old music? No, of course not. That's a part of my story. It's a part of my life, and it, it's it encapsul- encapsulates the uh, you know the the whole aspect of me growing and learning as a musician. So it's it's that you know. You know, and I know we kind of. Uh, talked about it briefly earlier but um i'd like to kind of you know just for people that don't know um our history as when it comes to our collaborations you know when it comes to our art forms you know i remember back in 2011 i lived out in ephraim and you know when when tony's music was really taken off he told me he says casey you got to do something with yourself man you know, and I mean, like, it was really you that kind of gave me that first little push to, you know, doing something, you know, because it's like, man, like, you really got to do something with yourself, man. You, you can't just, like, do nothing. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And, and you know, I thought about it for a little bit, and I was just like, man, you know what? <sighs> Fucking Tony's right, man. I just, you know, and and it started with the Jaws for Windows is a Murderer thing, uh, with the influence there. And as your music career grew, um, I've always, you know, been a real big into pro wrestling, you know, made my own shows for years and years and years. And I, I started thinking, I said, well, you know, I mean, Tony's got this music thing. And what if, what if we start to collaborate a little bit here and a little bit there and, you know, here we are all these years later and, you know, I have this podcast and t- Tony brother, we did it again, man. Mm-hmm. We did it again. And it is, I mean, you know, this is a big time collaboration right here, man. Big time. Yeah. I, I, so with, with, with Casey's talking about, I, he has a, um, a really, really cool audio, um, pro wrestling, fantasy league that he's been doing for years and years and years and he can probably tell you more about that later but i i as, as things got better and better with my music um you know i used to be a big wwe fan personally i but i'm not not really anymore or anything and like i i grew out of that phase but i still kind of like it it's entertaining but I'm, i i made him a couple of themes for some of his characters um and it was it was really cool it was really fun and you know, just, to, you know, it, it puts you in that, in that cool, you know, imagination stage. It's like, thinking oh, yeah. about it, you know, you know and, and th- that, that, that all goes into like, are you a good writer? You know what I mean? Because you really have to be like super creative to be a good writer. And, and I'll say this too. I mean, like, I love this little story. Um, Mr. Schofield that that is awesome okay so for for anybody that doesn't know okay um at some point in this pro wrestling stuff i wanted to kind of you know bring out a little bit of my own creative side like you know who i am you know as you know like my sarcastic personality type 
And so, like, I created this Mr. Schofield character, this, you know, prick, you know, arrogant prick character, you know, <laughs> like this really overblown character of me. And um, the first thing is um, anything that I did artistically, like, I was really big into high school pride. You know what I mean? Like, that was just one thing that I was always into. And I went to Fremont High, and we were the Fremont High Silver Wolves, right? So uh, we were creating this song, me and Tony, and I said, is there, is there any way that I can get like a howl in there? And he's like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And then he, he and I sat down to, to discuss the writing of this song, and he said, what what does this song mean like what do you want this to be and i kind of gave him an idea and i mean tony's a musician i mean you know he can figure this shit out so like i kind of gave him an idea and he's like stops for a second and then he's like i got you <laughs> and then like oh that's hilarious <laughs> yeah later like he's like dude fucking check your dropbox man you gotta see this it's Mr. Schofield, and I'm like, oh, oh, damn. <laughs> this is awesome, man. Oh, dude, awesome. I, I still remember. It was probably 2013 or 2015 when I made it. You know, it, was a, it was a minute, but I, <laughs> it was just so much fun. You know, it put sound effects in there. You know, this dude who wants to kick, do, he's going to kill you or kick your ass. Like, Yes, yes. Do, do you... Do you have that? I, st- I still do have that. Yeah. Can can we splice it into this podcast? Yeah, we can we can play a little bit. Sure. Hold on. In fact, you know what? Maybe we can even play it live and talk about it as it plays. I have a, I do have a little bit of podcasting skill here to do that. Give me one second. Let me find her. But uh, keep talking about it though while it, while I look here. So so, I mean, I I just like, I believe that. In any line of work that you do, you have to, you know, be proud of your product. And most importantly, though, you can't forget where you come from. And I mean, like, it means a lot to me for a lot of reasons. I mean, most importantly, because, you know, it's my buddy Tony, you know, I mean, he made it for me, you know, there's no other Mr. Schofield song out there. Like it's written for me. And, uh, uh, I got a thing in my mouth and, uh, you know, also my my ten year high school reunion is coming up in June, and you know I might just play it at that reunion, but um, I want to play it here um, a little bit of it. Um, the the howl that you hear in the beginning, of course, it is a tribute to all my fellow Silver Wolves, and of course uh, the song written by the man himself. It is titled. Mr. Schofield. Can you hear this? Can you hear this? There it goes. I mean, listen to that beat, man. That's just sick right Mm -hmm. there. Fuck, that is 
little trip down memory lane too. But yeah, that that is that. I <laughs> oh man, it just gets my production um, critiques r- tingling too. It's like ah, but shoot. Um, but yeah, yeah. man, you know, I I've I've done a few things for him, and it, it's it's always been pretty fun. Oh yeah, shoot. I mean always, you know, and it's you know, and it's always fun, like especially when you when you collaborate two different artists on two different platforms, but yet they can click, yep. you know, mm-hmm. and it's like, okay, maybe I can't identify with you in this area, but I can in this area. In oh this yeah. Area. Uh, well, shoot. We're looking at about the 15 minute mark here. Do you want to co- kind of bring this to a close? Yeah. Yeah. I think we could do Well, I mean, you know, the thing is, is we just get talking and then- I know, I know it. I know it. I know it. Um, well, first of all, dude, um, thank you so much for the uh, opportunity to uh, you know talk about it because it's it, you know it's kind of nice to have a, a little um, recap of my life too for me personally because it reminds me of why I do what I do and it keeps me uh, you know at a solid ground and shit like that. But um, yeah, guys, so if if you guys are inter- at all interested in li- listening to the music and getting into it. Um, you can go to Bandcamp, my Bandcamp page, tonygebhard.bandcamp.com. That's T-O-N-Y-G-E-B-H-A-R-D dot B-A-N-T, excuse me, D-C-A-M-P dot com. Um, you can also search Tony Gebhard through iTunes, Spotify, Amazon Music, iHeart, Pandora, whatever is your poison of choice. And Father Forgive Me is available as well as a couple covers that I have done. Uh, Lights by Ellie Golding is a prime example. Our Reach Out is also there. You can listen to me on YouTube, wherever wherever you'd like. Um, and CD number two is on its way. I'm working on a can- uh, fundraiser campaign right now that's going to launch here in the next month or two. So thank you very much. Also, uh, if you want to find my podcast feed and subscribe to this, um, you can go into uh, wherever you you download your podcast from uh you can find us on itunes um as well as other platforms um go into the search box type in my name casey schofield that's capital c-a-s-e-y space capital s-c-o-f-f-i-e-l-d and it should pull us up uh it'll say something like the jaws for windows podcast uh you want to find that uh seeing with your eyes not your ears or excuse ears, eyes, fuck, I don't know. <laughs> anyway, uh, you'll find us, uh, hit the subscribe button, and uh, I'm going to let this, uh, I'm going to let you guys go, but I'm going to tell you, Tony, my friend, we've been friends a long time, brother, and thank you so much, brother. You know I love you, man, always. Yeah, I love and you too. Uh, when you when you come to Salt Lake, man, you know my house is always open. Mm. Me, Justin, we got you, buddy. All right, well, you guys enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you so much. Keep music on your playlist at all times. Take care, guys.